OJ came in the locker room and said, how about them dirty birds? And everybody was like, Oh, that might okay. be catchy. And then they showed the highlights of him doing that. It was like, okay, that's a dirty bird right there. Well, because they had the Lambo leap right. in Green Bay at the time. They had right. the Lambo leap. And in Denver, they had that Maha salute right. they were doing when right. they scored. And we need something. We have history because of shoes and then prime. Like, we are known to celebrate. If you know me, I'm not a dancing guy. So He's people a two-stepper. Yeah, I'm a two-stepper. <laughs> so people two were really surprised. But I think it was um, getting to the NFL, and I think it's different than college, man. There's just a celebration when you get in that end zone. It's just such a big deal. The one that everybody loves and knows is when we were playing the 49ers again. And I scored, and I saw the red light from the Fox camera, and I was like, I knew, I knew I was going right home. I was like, mm-hmm. And I started rocking, and then I just did it. Got riding home. My dad was like, man, everybody was talking about that dance. And I was like, I hope somebody recorded it. Anderson with the running room. 10, 5, touchdown, Jamal. The Falcons get another touchdown. OJ Santiago, touchdown, Falcons. Wow. End zone, touchdown, Falcons. Terrence Mathis all by himself in the back of the end zone. Falcons put the NFL on notice in 1998 by winning the franchise's first NFC championship. 25 years later, and that Falcons team is still the winningest team in Falcons history. Today, I'm joined by OJ Santiago, Terrence Mathis, Ray Buchanan, and Jamal Anderson to relive that historic season. But guys, before we kind of discuss your memories of that year, let's look back at what it was like to be a Falcon in 1998. How about that? Still has it going up top. Touchdown, Falcons! Wow, what a play! And Chandler throws for Mathis. Oh, what a hand grab at the 44 yard line! Steve Young play action straight drop looking across the middle. And here is the Dirty Bird dance making its <laughs> debut in the upper Midwest inside the Metrodome. A touchdown of five yards and the Falcons are on the board. No one gave them a chance except themselves and they just did what no one thought they could do. A tremendous job by the Falcons. <laughs> All right, guys, so I know that video probably brought back a lot of immediate memories, but before we get into 98, I want to go back to where the foundation was laid with Dan Reeves in his first year in 97 and that back half of that season. What was the end of that season kind of like for all of you? We were completely changing what we were doing offensively. I mean, we were basically... Uh, you know, the, the the Colts didn't call it the run and shoot, but the same stuff that Peyton and those guys famously did for years, that's what we were doing. You know, Terrence uh, getting 100 catches and, and then um, uh, Eric Metcalf. So when Dan came in, it was like, this is what we're going to do, double tight ends. Like, we, we, we didn't even have tight ends on our roster, we did, did we? We did. We had, like, Mitch Lyons. Yeah. We had, like, one or two tight ends. But, like, that was a whole nother, like, O.J. coming in. He was a... You know, this it was what six seven. You know, you know, I came in here in '97. That was my first draft yeah. class, so I got drafted in the third round uh, in '97. So everything was new to me, and I was starting opening day as a rookie, and so I'm in the huddle with Terrence and these guys, and I everything was new to me. And I, all the one thing I remember that '97 year, it just never felt like we had a home field advantage. Right. We'd go in there and play the Raiders, and it'd be Raiders people everywhere. Uh, Peyton Manning came to town. You remember that that one year. Um, Tennessee had played in the SEC championship the game the day before. Um, so the Indianapolis Colts fans were all in the building with burnt orange or, or, or the Colts everywhere. Right. And um, right. that changed. That, that was interesting to see that change out right. too from that right. first year. And I think like once we, um, you know, he, he, he had talked about like he, there's so many things uh -huh. that you, you probably run through your head with Coach yeah. Reeves, but like how when we become a good team, mm -hmm. we're going to learn how to win close games. Well, in 97, the first half, I don't even want to spend a lot of time on 97, but we, we lost 
how many games by like less than a touchdown or whatever. So we were like scrapping and fighting and learning and Ray was there and Cornelius was there. And so all of these new elements coming together. Well, well, even, like, even just away from the football aspect of it, you know, before we were a bunch of guys who just did whatever we wanted to do and we were in practice having a good time with, and I'm not saying we weren't disciplined, but we weren't, we weren't organized, but we, went and just played football. Then when Dan came and then it was, you got to do this, attention to detail, yeah. no helmets yeah. on the ground, this, this, yeah. this. But, and we're like, what? So we were uh -oh. like, who is this guy? Listen, man. So we, we couldn't, it was, it took us a minute to, it took us a minute to trust him. Yeah. And then once we trusted him and, and, and believed in what he was doing, and then he was showing us how to be professionals, he treated us like men when we traveled and all those things, and we started to like that. And then we came together as a team. We got closer in 97, and we, that's what started the 98 rallies because we got close in 97 at the end, and it was like, wow. And I always say that usually when you re rebuilding a team, and like Dan Rees had a mentality of, you know, running the football, playing good defense, playing discipline. And then you start bringing those caliber players in and uh, they start to suit. Like it was a lot of guys that was already there, but 60% 60 of the team was gutted. It was yeah. like Dan came in and started changing yeah. a lot in that mindset and temple. And that's sort of like, I came from the Colts. That was sort of like what I was used to for the past two years anyway. So it's not that I was, I, I was just an added element to what was they, they was bringing right. to the defense. And that was physicality. And, you know, bringing in Eugene Robinson, Cornelius Bennett, right. you know, some, it was some, you know, you already had the hammer. You had guys up front, right. Chuck Smith and those guys. We, was, we had some dogs that can get after it. And when you bring guys in with different personalities like that, it take a little time to gel. So it wasn't like we were the bad news bears out there, like, like, you know, like I tried to play it out to be, but for the most part, it's hard to like trust other players when you first starting to, you know, get to know each other. So it took a little time for us to do it. So that's when we, we were getting it. And then that second half, I'll never forget that me, uh, I think it was, it was either Chuck or you, somebody or Bob, they had, we had a big team meeting right at the halfway point to try to get everybody together to say you know what we're this close to winning we just right. need to finish games right and that's where it you start changed. to see mm -hmm. that knob start to turn to where everybody's starting to turn up to be who yeah we had to. youngsters too if you think about it like hans bard was in there you know the pieces like he said you know bringing in cornelius bennett who had been to all those super bowls eugene had just come off of green bay's super Bowl. runs mm -hmm. so you know they they had an expectation when they got here like, hey, the, the talent is here. Yeah. We can see it. We just right. gonna have to put it together. And I mm -hmm. think that that leadership and obviously, you know, there, as they mentioned, Jesse just being a, a rock. And regardless of the circumstances, that guy was coming to play, you know. And so when all of those pieces start coming together, we started winning. And then, phew. yeah, you you have a coach that had championship pedigree, and then you bring in players with championship pedigree. Then you got a bunch of guys that's hungry for a championship and then you merge those that talent together you know you we couldn't couldn't help but be better you know and, and that's what happened to us we got better but the, we, we can talk about wins and losses but the beauty of that 97 and 98 team is that we truly liked each other yes. to the point that we loved like, each other yes yeah, like you know all... it wasn't it wasn't like we compete here's the thing we competed against each other i remember one day we in practice and I dropped the ball and Ray yelled from the sideline, hey man, you messing with my money. You can't drop balls like that. You can't. So, and I'm mad, like fussing back at him. And then I said, well, he's right. So then we started holding each other accountable. Jamal, hey man, you got to finish to the end zone. You know, in practice, you know, we hold each other accountable. You know, hey, Juice, you got to make that catch. You know, when you start holding each other accountable without getting upset at each other, yeah. that's when you know. That's when you know. Now, 25 years ago, you all started on what would be the winningest season in Falcons history to date. Let's take a look back. In the first two weeks of that season, it was back-to-back -back wins against Carolina and the Eagles. Had a third week bye, but then you went away to San Francisco for week four against your division rivals. Let's take a look back at what that rivalry was like before we discuss San Francisco. That was a 19-yard gain, and here is Jamal Anderson. 
Anderson. Anderson with one defender. And Murphy oh, Mance oh, tries oh. to push him out. Oh, down Jamal Anderson. Pressure on Young has to get rid of it. And it's knocked away by Buchanan. Beautiful job by Ray Buchanan. Up for grabs. Who has it? Falcons have it! Falcons have it! Falcons have it! And the Falcons have won the football game. It's on to the next step. So obviously there's a lot of history with the 49ers, especially that year you saw them three times. Well, let's talk about the first. What is that rivalry like against a division rival that's across the country from you? You know, it's funny when you have a rivalry like that. Uh, the 49ers were the 49ers. Jerry Rice, Steve Young, Garrison Hurst, and that defense, you know, Brian Young. They had so many goats. And they, you know, and I ain't gonna lie. Before that, I think the Falcons were the whipping stick, you know, for, yeah, uh, I know for, I, for yeah. a long time. I don't know if we can call it a rivalry. No, yeah. okay, it was, <laughs> it was but, day for yeah. them. <laughs> I mean, we used to come, we used to come in every now and then and catch a catch an uppercut yeah. or punch punch him once or twice. But you know, it was so crazy about that game in that season, and I specifically remember, um, I think it was you at halftime, right, in San Francisco. We went off. Mm -hmm. We were in, we we were playing. We were two and zero. Oh, but by the time we got there, yeah. we had to buy. Yeah, and we that was had to had to be one of the worst quarters that we had had. Yeah. We especially didn't expect like that. Our energy going in the candlestick was we finally got the team now, mm -hmm. and y'all are good, and mm -hmm. you know y'all are loaded. But we finally got a team mm -hmm. now. We think that we we can, beat you. We can win. Yeah, and we played so horrible the first half of that game. He, which never goes off in the locker room, he went off in the locker room um, at, at halftime and then was like, get, get, get it together. And then the second half of that game was a whole, we lost, we still lost, but it was a whole nother thing. It, I mean, it was, we fought. normally it would have been like a 55 or yeah. to seven or, you know, yeah. and then yeah. we ended up fighting back mm -hmm. and, and we could not wait to play them again. for them to come to Atlanta. You said um, that you were kind of more of like the whipping stick for San Francisco. So do you think the NFL and like the fans in general took this matchup very seriously? No way. No, no, no way. Not for a long time. And you knew it, you were going all the way out there. Remember the Monday night games? You got to go all the way out there on a Monday night to lose, to get whooped by mm -hmm. San Francisco, to come home. Mm -hmm. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. By, by the time you fly home, it was just, you knew it was bad going out there. And you just, you expected, um, we think we got a good team. We can do a little something here. I was new on the team, and I just remember it not against these boys. We mm -hmm. might pick up, we might pick up some other wins around the league yeah, somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to San Francisco to beat them. Um, but you know, deep down inside, you felt that if we had a good day, though, we can get these boys. You know, I felt that we 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 had the momentum start starting to go into you know, especially when we played them that second time. We had that that drive and that momentum. So the confidence started to build and we knew that we can go compete. One, we knew we was gonna run the ball. This dude right here was smash mouth. Now, a lot of the DBs, you know, that actually, once they got across the line, they didn't want to tackle him. It was fun watching that. You know, it was fun watching T-Mac, you know, just burn the DBs, because they really couldn't cover the guy. They had either cover Tony, double him, or he was free and open, or that dude right there was wide open in the middle. So we had all the, the elements to compete in. Defensively, you best to believe, I couldn't wait. I had the game circled every time. I was like, I can't wait to face Jerry Rice, T.O., yeah, J.J. Stokes at, at that particular time. And I knew right. that what we can do, I'm like, man, most people don't want to, you know, think about that type of a matchup. They can't sleep. No, I couldn't wait because I got tired of it. I got tired of hearing the, the stories and the history of what actually uh, was going on. But when we had the, the wheel, when that gerbil started to go, we, we just knew that we had the right piece to put together. And the coaches did a good job of game planning as well, too. I, I, I think that was one of those losses that told us, okay, we're good, but we're not there yet. And we went back, I think the next weekend, we practiced, you know, our, one of the best weeks we had. And they cut and some people too. Yeah, we, we had. You remember that Jerron Bolden on the way home? What yeah, you talking about? Yeah. They got JB on the way home. John, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, they. Yeah. You remember that? Mm -hmm. They got Jerry Rice busted him up a couple times. Yeah. They said, yeah. "Man, that's yeah. it." Yeah. Sending sure, a sign. I seen Jerry Rice put one of our guys in the locker room in tears. <laughs> <laughs> it was not '98. Yeah. It wasn't '98. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my God!" Mm -hmm. 
This man is shell shocked. Yeah, he's the goat. Which I mean, hey. It is but you also left that San Francisco game feeling like you could, we could play with anybody in the league right. at exactly. this point. We can, we, we can beat win. anybody we in the league. We shot ourselves in the foot. A lot of people don't know about the turnovers that we had. Uh, That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, we the game turned around. Yeah, we had it, but that. the game started yeah. to, to turn yeah. around off a of, uh, turnover. That was one of Dan's biggest pet peeves. He yeah. wanted a team that played discipline. If we played discipline and not beat ourselves, you know, it wasn't like they, they didn't come, they the Fortnite didn't come out to play, but right. we did hurt ourselves in that game too. Yeah. Let me ask you guys this, since you don't think many fans took y'all seriously. Where in the season and like what game, I think I know what game it is, but um, we'll see what you guys say. Do you think that NFL fans just around the league looked at the Falcons and thought, okay, maybe, maybe they are pretty good? Oh, I don't know which game it was. I think it was New England. We went up there and we beat the brakes off of New England, and they weren't expecting that. And I think people felt like we hadn't played a lot of great teams but it was like at a, that point. And, and here's the thing. It was a very physical game. Yes. But we still beat, I mean, they, it's not like. stomped them out. Yeah. And, and they, and they out. came, they were still battling. It was, it was right. a dominant performance that, that game. It and was. we beat them down. I mean, the yes. defense was scoring yeah. touchdowns. We're scoring touchdowns on offense. Yeah. Um, it, it was, was just, you looked around and we just, it was a celebration. The whole game we were celebrating all game long. Well, you, you just you, beat them. You heard it from people, the talking heads on ESPN. Oh, the Falcons are here, but they're not the, the next two weeks. Oh, well, but this going to show how important they got the, the Patriots and the 49ers back to back. And we're going to see who they made of. OJ, did, did, when, he, when he scored, he did the legendary where he was ah, he, did like the sound. Comes. <laughs> he did the sound effects too. Uh -huh. And it was like the first time, like we leading sports center, like with the sound effects. And I remember oh, another thing I won't forget. They booed me in New England cause I did not dance. So when I scored, I was like, oh, I don't, you know, I was on that little Barry Sanders. I'm gonna be respectful on the road. Oh, I don't wanna do that and you know, oh, whatever. I just want to win, man. Please. <laughs> After that game, I was dancing so hard, I almost broke my leg. <laughs> I was like, okay. When I, when I remember we got to St. Louis, I was like, it's coming. The uh -huh. section. It's I, re coming. I remember the the moniker came out. After the New England game, OJ came in the locker room and said, "How about them dirty birds?" And I was like. Oh, it's gonna be catchy. Bird. That might okay. be okay. Really and then they showed the highlights of him doing that. It was like, okay, that's a dirty bird right there. Mm -hmm. And then someone took it and to a whole different level, nationally, <laughs> internationally, globally. No, we first, started, he, but we he first talked about it when we yeah. went to New York, remember? We first, yeah, we was talking about yeah. it. When we, first we went, went to dinner York. for the guy, the producer, uh -huh. you did the little uh, NFL rap thing for, and we were playing, yeah. we were playing the Giants on national TV. And we all had mm -hmm. went Monday out night. and a very nice dinner. Oh, and I was like, we gotta we we need to do something. And we yeah. had heard we had started using Dirty Bird, but we didn't really have anything. Yeah, we didn't go. Mm -hmm. No, Music. we didn't have any any like coordinated kind of Well, because they had the Lambo Leap right. in Green Bay at the time. They had right. the Lambo Leap and in Denver they had that Maha mm -hmm. salute right. they were doing when right. they scored. And right. like I said, we need, And literally just what I was saying. We need something. And then you I was like, I mean? we our, need something. Yep. And then I was just like, we all literally just like this sitting in the and we were in a limo or something, um, and we were talking about it at dinner. And I remember, like, I was like, you know, we have history because the shoes and then prime. Like, we are known to celebrate. Like, this is what the Falcons do. You know what I mean? So there's precedence here for us to celebrate in the end zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. And I think that it's cool because it, it's, it got the, you got to see guys' personalities. Yeah, because you know, cause you, cause, you know it, Juice. When yeah. he did that, yeah, we was like, that, I was like, yes. that came from yes. Juice. Yes. Yes. Juice? Yes. OJ out there, Dan, Joe, said, I'm like, he'll fight you in a minute, but we never yeah. seen him yeah. show, like, <laughs> yeah. I ain't have no fun. <laughs> <laughs> with it so yes. what happened was you know and Jigga took I gotta call Jam he took it to a whole different level because he saw the end zone more Terrence had his version I had a ver Jesse had the worst one out of all Jesse too muscular with his yeah, yeah, he too right. muscular with his that was a muscle so, bird so yeah. everybody so I thought it was like kind of catching not only for that but if you made a big play or something actually happened you know you had the opportunity to do it right. I'm like dang you know what that's even kind of creative because not everybody want to make a play yeah. you know everybody want to get it but not only that if you made a play against us people were mocking they were trying us. to mock it they would get bad yeah. with it. To mock and it. we was like okay, okay. we're gonna get the last yeah. laugh <laughs> we're gonna get the last laugh yeah, that dude of, right there gonna get the last yeah. dance yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, it was crazy because I think it turned um, obvi obviously 
I think that New York game too, because we played so dominant, but nobody was really paying attention. Nobody that game. was paying attention. No, mm-hmm. and then we went to New England, and it's the, that little those games with the the way we were dominant on both sides of the ball, and then I no question about it, like we led the highlights and we, we beat up New England, but with OJ doing it, I mean it was everywhere, like everywhere. Ah! Yeah, it was so everywhere. classic. It was yeah. like perfect mm-hmm. because it was a perfect play and it was great. We were muddy and it was like, Grr. it was like the perfect attitude for uh, the perfect way our team perfect wants, time. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect and time. so then we just, <laughs> and then next. Uh, After that, we didn't think we could lose though. I really, yeah. no. I didn't think anyone could no. beat us. I didn't think there was any player that I was going to face across the line for me that was going to do anything. Um, I just felt we were going to win. It was going to be tough games. It would be some close games, but we were just dominant physically. Uh, we were stronger. We were bigger. We were faster. I felt like almost every position, I just felt like you, you couldn't beat us. Yeah. I mean, we, it's not like we were hiding what we were doing Mm-mm. offensively. No. Like we were like, here we come, yeah. the we, overpowered line on the right, and we were coming downhill with like, the whole, you know what I mean? It and was I'm, no yeah. secrets. And I'm Where playing besides Bob Whitfield. I'm playing beside yeah. Bob Whitfield, and he's an all-pro tackle. And I remember there were times in the fourth quarter we would tell people, it's coming. Tell them to play. Because Bob and I would get down in the dirt and say, it's coming right here, my man. Stop it. And, and they couldn't stop it. By that time, it's the fourth quarter. You're running the ball. Jamal had like 400-plus carries that year, and we were going to wear you down. You could see him giving up. And you know when they were, they were starting to yeah, give up over there, and we would just get stronger and stronger. And what I was about to say real quick was like the the, the fans in the stand. Now you know they early expected in the to season, win too. I used to look up in the stands, and usually you know on the defense side of the ball, we fed off of the energy, you know. But all of us did. But when you started to see each week, you know, each time we had a home game, it started to get more. And more, more and, and more, more people, and they yeah. wanted to be involved. They wanted to be a part of it. And when they got loud in there, oh my Ooh, goodness! Yeah. When it started to turn, I've ne- I ain't yeah. never seen See, we had like fun that. too. That was it was like it's a perfect marriage for the city, mm-hmm. for the fans, for the type of fan right. base, for the diversity of the fan base. Yeah, you know, to be as entertaining, to be to play well, but to also entertain while you're playing. I mean, mm-hmm. we were fun. We, we engaged know? with the fans a lot. Yes. We, we weren't just coming, you know, sit on the sidelines and just right. look straight ahead. We talk to people in the stands and, right. you know, mm-hmm. at the place. We, we did those things, you know. We, we made them part of the atmosphere. And I think that's what made it special. We made them, we made them feel everything that we felt. I want to talk really quickly about the Dirty Bird. There's been a lot of speculation about who actually started it. And before we lay it to rest, (laughs) let's look at the dance that started a cultural phenomenon. Do you want it clean? No. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Tell me how you like it. Dirty, dirty, dirty. How we gonna do it? Dirty, dirty, dirty. We all need to get dirty, dirty, dirty. Do you want it clean? No. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Tell me how you like it. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Okay, so Jamal, you kind of said already that OJ was the one that thought of it, brought it up. So OJ, how did you, how did it come to to be what it is? Well, listen, I, and I, and they know me. If you know me, I'm not a dancing guy. So he's a two stepper. Yeah, I'm a two stepper. <laughs> <laughs> so people were really surprised, but I think it was. Um, get into the NFL, and I think it's different than college, man. There's just a celebration when you get in that end zone. It's just such a big deal to get those seven points, six points, whatever you want to call it. And um, we, like I said, we wanted something. We felt like we were a team that was on the rise, and we wanted a thing that was ours, and uh, we came up with that. And, of course, man, I think I had seven touchdowns that year, and Jamal had, like, 17. Yeah. So I think that's what really right. pushed it over. So. And plus, I did, like, a, um, so, like, when I was talking, to, when I when we, when we were first talking about doing it, I so I didn't even score. Did you score in New York, the Giants game from that weekend? I think you might have scored. scored. I scored that weekend. Yeah, but like you didn't score. I didn't score that game, so I didn't really have a chance to celebrate. But I was like jumped up after I had one of the longest runs I had. I jumped up and just did this on one side. The one that everybody loves and knows is when we were playing the 49ers again. And I scored, and I saw the red light from the Fox camera. And I was like, 
I knew I knew I was going right home. I was like, mm-hmm. And I started rocking. And then I just did it. My dad was like, man, everybody was talking about that dance. And I was like, I hope somebody recorded it. Because <laughs> I gotta remember it. <laughs> but that's the first time I actually did that version. And then that's when I did it from uh, there out. But like, again, OJ never really did it, did, did you know, celebrated like, like, like that, you know, and, or if anybody else did it, everybody had their own little version of it, you know? Um, <clears throat> mine's is iconic, because it's the freshest. <laughs> <laughs> to, to see OJ Make do it again, and, and dip down with it. Yeah, he got low on with it. I, I, I have never yeah. seen that version, I've always seen the yeah. top part we went to, cut it off. Yeah, we went to, and I, like I said, it was a, such a set off for us, because it, it was the perfect game at the perfect time, and it was like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. No, and, and, and it started to be a thing. People were doing it. Uh, you'd be in the street. I'd be at the grocery store, oh, yeah. and people yeah. start hitting the dirty right. part yeah. at the grocery store. You right. know, yeah. if they yeah. catch you in your car or whatever at the light, yeah. and they see and they oh, and then start doing a dirty part at the traffic light. So yeah. it was a lot. It was it was they a lot going on. The t-shirts, the right. yeah. You know, right. Everybody getting you know even the name, the, the fans and the costumes and everything. Like, they started working their game back. It happened quick. It happened quick. I was like, what made us so dirty? <laughs> that's I said, we dirty when we when we that ratchet we was beating it down, but it was like that's what it that's what it felt like. So it was like they fi we finally had a thing. Like back in the day in night in ninety one and all that, they had MC Hammer, you had Prime doing his dance, but you know, in Atlanta is more of a you know, it's an entertaining city. Right. So of course they had MC Hammer. When we were winning games, I probably I could have saw I saw Moet's Day, I saw Ludacris, I saw yeah, Jermaine Dupree, I saw there. all of Atlanta, you know, uh, entertainers starting to, to come out. And it, it brought the whole city together. So the dance, the name, everything. And winning, and winning, and winning. And winning. It, winning like, is it, big. It, now it put the pressure on, not the pressure, because we already had the mindset that we wanted to win. Pull up and dap Holyfield put, before I go yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it What's like, up, champ? The <laughs> so it's like, it, it was like, it was, it was sort of like, now it was like, we had, it, was, it was the expectation each week. And that's when Juice said that we probably felt like we weren't going to lose again. It was because the way we were beating people and the confidence that we was actually having mindset wise was like, all right, we can, we can beat anybody. I mean, you know, we had that one instance, you know, when Dan Reeves got sick and had his operation and yeah, we that's yeah. in New Orleans. We didn't know. Yeah. Um, and we went out there and played we phenomenal had to play, football. And we had then, to play Detroit. This, yeah. this, and this, the, the wonderful thing about it, when he left and then Rich Brooks and Art Shell took over, nothing changed. No. Nothing changed. Actually, that gave I, more think momentum. We, I think, I think that was the time where we started having more fun and got closer mm -hmm. is when Dan had his surgery because it was like, okay, you know, hey, leaders going, we got to stay tight stay on point whatsoever and I think we got closer at that time we had a lot of leaders yeah we know? did yeah. we had a lot of leaders we had know, each other kind of. I get you know what's uh was probably a a benefit for us is it's not like to today where everything's so instantaneous mm -hmm. like somebody had to take the time to sit down and decide who was going to be called about what and how there was going to be addressed within the team type of thing you know what I mean so it wasn't like now where it's somebody's tweeting you we found out your coach had a heart attack mm -hmm. on 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 whatever. What is it called now? The X. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. A, a yeah, Twitter. It's not yeah. even Twitter. We got the X on there. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying. So uh, then, right back then, it was like you know uh, the way everything happened. It was a couple people get called, the team get together. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is just you know. So yeah, it was crazy though. It was crazy because so many things were going well, and you know uh, if you know anything about his history. Um, and I'm a nerd, so I knew all about Coach Reeves before he got here. And, you know, you the casual football fan knows his success. Well, he was a different guy when he got here. So, like, he was very tough and rigid when he was in Denver. They were successful, but some of those things uh, created a conflict with some of his star players. That was not any of our experience, okay? So he was like a different guy you know especially at that point in time at the season you know we're we are you know a well-oiled machine if you will you know like practices are, are one way and everybody's coming to play everybody's got their head on like you know what you're supposed to be doing but it was crazy because we're like you know we're having 
all the success now, and it's like, what? You know, coach had a what? You know. I think, man, one of the, um, and I can't get out of my brain, one of the, the, the uh, I thought, Dan Reeves coming back into the locker room, it must have been a couple of days after this surgery. So they've told us that you had a quadruple bypass surgery. So they've taken a saw and just sawed your rib cage right open. And this dude walked in the locker room like two days after and, and, and came in there just to say what's up. He wasn't gonna coach, he wasn't gonna do anything. He just came in to say what's up to us. He, okay. he looked gray, like his color was gray, right? I don't know if you guys remember, he just looked gray, he looked half dead. But mm -hmm. he came out there and he spoke to us and pumped us up and I was just like, oh what? my goodness, I can go tear somebody's head, head off now. Right? Right now. I'm ready yeah. to go um, because he looked like he had just jumped off his deathbed, came in there and said what's up to us. And um, just it was a strength thing. And it was a team that was just real close. Like and that a, just brought us close. Like a, I'm OK. Yeah. And I want you to know, know that, that we okay. still have a job. Yeah, to go do. take care of business. I, th yeah. I think it's real important, too. The fact that uh, not only did you have leaders on the team, it was the coaching staff that he had. You know, Art Shell was a head coach before. You know, you had Rich Brooks, who was a head coach before. Dan actually had coaches that mimicked his, uh, you know, his personality. And so that's why we didn't really miss, miss a step. You know, of course, it did affect everybody. Everybody was worried about Dan. But the one thing we knew about Dan, we couldn't change who we were and our identity and how we actually practiced and how we operated. And the coaches, they wanted to make sure we had that same vibe, that same vibe. And I'll never forget the game, the game that game that he, uh, the first game that he wasn't there and Rich Brooks actually took over. Um, you know, we actually dedicated the game, you know, to Dan. You know, was that, was that, that was the motivate. Yep, that was the Detroit game. Oh. We dedicated that game because it was it was crucial. It was just happened to be that particular game that we actually really needed to. Yes. Feel we, needed to we needed to we needed to win. Division. We needed to clinch the division. We just did. Which is we crazy because right. yeah. what we were talking about earlier, the 49ers, yeah. right. like we're having a historic run, and they right behind us. Right behind us. Like right behind us. Like right behind us. And okay. We had like 10 or 11 wins at the time. Yes, and I was like, like really. Like, like what? The Couldn't fact that we had to go on the road in 98 is insane, but then we were playing a team that was 15 and 1. Like, so, you know, going through that year, um, you know, and you look at the, the opponents that we played and where their records were and stuff, you know, by the time we got we got that far deep into it, it was like we had seen so much and then having to play the 49ers three times, you know, like pulling up to Minnesota, it was like our attitude was like – who? I got tired. Yeah. I got yeah, tired. Got I, was, I was like, oh, man, I'm, this, I'm so sick of the underdogs. And, you know, the, yeah. we still didn't really have the media attention that we were supposed to have. You would finish the regular season with a nine-game win streak. Take a look at these highlights really fast. Mm. Here comes the yes. pressure. The ball is loose. Ball is loose, and it's scooped up. Scooped up by the Falcons. Chuck Smith. Look at Smith go. 40. So when you look back at those nine games, win, 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 and so on, what kind of sticks out to you about those nine games? I think the Colts and the Bears game. <laughs> those were games where we didn't play well at all. No. But we won. Yeah. It was, I mean. I think Peyton Manning was cooking us at yeah, first. Yeah, and we, for somehow, we won those games. Chandler went out in one game. Yeah, and. The the Bears game, right? The Bears game, and yeah. when we won those two games, it was like, ooh, okay, we got those out of our system. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. And for me, I was having so much fun. I, I can't even describe how much fun I was yeah. having living at, in, in, those, in that year. It's just an amazing season. That Christmas, it was right around Christmas, and the Dolphins came the Dolphins in. And when game. I say people still didn't give us the respect, we thought we, yeah. at that point, we've got, what, 13 wins, mm -hmm. 12 wins. Um, we're going to the playoffs. We're feeling good. And the Dolphins just came in talking, talking. so much That's mess. Right. I mean, crazy. They, they just came in the stadium talking like as if they were just going to whoop us. And, mm -hmm. and, and the vibe you just kind of felt was there's no respect. Nobody right. respects us still at this point. And we put up and, double uh, nickels oh, on Oh, we put 
we beat the brakes off them as well. And um, it was just amazing to go yeah. out there. It's the end of the season, and you're still just dominating Dominic. teams. And you just felt like there's no one who can stop you. Yeah, I, I, I felt that uh, it was actually kind of fun, you know, even being on the defensive side of the ball. You know, a lot of times, even though we were tired, we were coming on the sideline, we were scoring so much. And be, we were actually getting up when we were supposed to be making defensive adjustments, trying to see <laughs> what, what Jam was doing. Is T-Mac about to score? Is Tony Martin, highest, highest chan man doing? So everybody was, was getting it in. So it was kind of fun to see. And that year, too, defensively, I mean, we led the league in sacks. Yes. You know, we led the league in picks. The you know, the, we, I mean, it, every, everybody was getting in on making plays each week. And you, don't, you didn't want to felt left out each week. You wanted to make a play because you knew you had to do your part to uh, you know, make an impact. And when they get that catchy each week, each week, each week, everybody wanted to be a part of it. So I think that's what, when you start playing like that way, that's when you know, that's when you know that you got a competitive team. And a lot of people can't put teams together like that. It's hard to win. People don't know how hard it is to get, you know, multiple victories in a row, let alone nine. It's hard to win games in the NFL each week when you got teams that's getting paid just like you are and studying just like you are. And, and how we operated that year to take down every snake that approached us, it was, it was fun. It was exciting. We, we competed against each other. In every practice. Day. In everything that we did, we competed. We, Boy. It was fun competition. <laughs> he and I competed every game day because I knew if I caught a ball and, and I get tripped up on the three-yard line, I'm not going to see the ball again. It's going to him three times. <laughs> so he so score I said, I better, better score. score. <laughs> I better score. So it, it's well, funny because I'll be I, like, Terrence, I, you better score. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm right. down three coins because he had 16, I had 13. So we were going at it every week, you know, come to my locker room, hey man, give me my, give my, give my coins. <laughs> so, and, and that's what made it fun because we were, we was like, well, how, how many touchdowns are you going to get this week? How many touchdowns you gonna get this game? I said, I bet you I beat you. And then we didn't worry about the opponent. Like like OJ said, we didn't care who lined up in front of us. We was just trying to do our thing. We was competing against each other. I feel like though, since we played together so much time trying to explain to people how dominant our defense was. But like we literally had the bomb squad. We led the league in sacks. That is no light feat. And it wasn't close. And then we led the league in turnovers, and we had the most interceptions. So that's like, you don't, you just don't get those levels of domination where you're like the top. You know what I mean? And so, you know, when you think about all of those things, it starts to make sense, like why this ascension was continuing to happen. You know, I remember before Coach Reeves got here, and you know, we would, we would drop our helmets. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we couldn't put your, and you know. Yeah. We couldn't put our helmets on the ground no more or take a knee. Sometimes we'd sit on the water cooler to mm -hmm. relax in between plays after a hard session. Baby, Dressed baby, that was to. done. <laughs> All of that was over. That was <laughs> it was like, no, no, no. This is, this is how this is how we're gonna be prepared. Yep. This is how we're gonna win, you know? Mm -hmm. And you believe and trust these things and do what you're supposed to do. And you know and, and obviously you gotta be fortunate and yeah. not be injured. And we were for the most that. part, yeah, for Stay the up. most part. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had an extraordinary game with uh, one of the worst audibles in the history of audibles, <laughs> the Jets game. Oh, it's Telephone! <laughs> With Steve Barkowski. Steve Barkowski. I was about to say Steve Barkowski. Yeah. Oh, man. I think that's the worst. That was like the only game where we were just like, Pfft. I mean, the Jets yeah. the Jets were no joke that year. I mean, the Jets could have yeah. easily been. Yeah. Uh, we just got lit up. Let's yeah. call it it. it, it. We, we took one on the chin. And yeah. We, yeah. You know, but it definitely was a wake up call, though, yes. too. You know, I yes. think everybody, when you get to bell rung like Especially that. Especially that late in the season, yeah. it was kind of like, all right, all right. Yeah. But we were had different, again, well, well, our circumstances were. Y'all don't remember when Eugene came in the locker room after the game and he talked about he gave an analogy of a, of a fight of a heavyweight fight so you're gonna win every round we lost a round today yeah let's come back the next round and win the rest of them and I looked at it like okay that's that makes that, sense, yeah. that really makes sense. Was, I always look at it as I mean I'm, I listen Jets fans you guys are awesome <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to take anything away from anybody. But I look at that. That game was like the anomaly. Yeah, you know? we mm. talk about that. all Nothing the time. was so right like for that, us. But whatever. Mm. We bounced back very well. Okay. Yeah. yeah.
Y'all had an incredible regular season. When you look back at it, at a, not getting in a postseason yet, but when you look back at the regular season, what are some moments that you're most proud of at, to be part of the Falcons? I'd say I'd go back to um, Dan Reeves, I think, having his surgery again mm -hmm. and coming back and us not, not missing a beat. Um, other people step up. They put pressure on, on players to step up, next man up kind of a deal, but the coaches stepped up everybody. And um, that's a big deal to have your head coach go out with that kind of a, that kind of a surgery, that kind of a, a emergency in the middle of the season. It was coming off the field after a game, right? And to just not lose a beat, not lose a game, just to keep rolling, I think I, we were really proud about that. Yeah, I, 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 think, um, I think that's a great point. And I, for me, um, how the season progressed and what transpired in the city, like with how we started, but just to watch like uh, the people trickle in more and more every week. No, that, that's the, the, the stadium the to go to packed, like to, yeah. to, to go from so-so to just packed house every week. But it was just like, yeah, it was like, it was like we were, I mean, I would, Rock stars. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. on top of the world. That yeah. was, that was a good like time the energy in the city was amazing. You know what I mean? And to see the pride that the fans had, that this team was playing as well as we were. And, you know, like they're, they're, it was their Falcons team. Like the people that were at Fulton Stadium, you know, um, they were so proud. It's like so many things that had been um, frustrating and or difficult, you know. Everything was coming together, and everybody was like, it was just crazy, you know. And everybody was dancing, you know. People were just hyped, and it was, it was amazing to be a part of. What I was proud of more than anything is that, you know, we weren't getting the recognition, or Atlanta wasn't getting the recognition that it actually deserved. But when we did, I was excited the fact that all of the personalities didn't change. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, a lot of people can get big headed and get complacent, you know, when you're winning. And when you have success, a lot of times, you know, you can see a lot of people changing. These dudes didn't change. You know, everybody was sort of, the, you know, the same. If anything, they changed for the better. You know, I thought that we even got closer a lot of times doing them, doing them fights and doing those times. And when you can do that, because I've seen a lot of teams explode and they have a lot of success. And you see it all the time, even today uh, in, in football, when they have a lot of success, they get on a winning streak. Everybody, it's all about them, you know. This team right here, it, we came together and he, Jamal, I, I seen him plenty of times go over to the line and say, dude, come on, y'all open up the holes. I got you, just let me get through a couple yards. I'm gonna pound somebody. We were holding it. Coaches didn't have to get on us. I was so proud of the fact that we had a bunch of leaders, a bunch of guys that got on each other and held each other accountable. I did that almost get beat up in the Jets game because I was screaming at the line that OJ was going to snap me. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to bring that up, man. But he had to understand a lot of his a lot of his yards came in the fourth quarter. But like he wanted them all in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So you kind of had to get, there was a little bit of tension there between running back, O-line, and tight end. Yeah. Somewhere between that second and third quarter. We didn't start winning yet in yeah. terms of our running. But uh, we used to wear teams down. And Jamal used to wear teams down. And um, so he, he was frustrated in that first quarter. He won a lot of yards in the first quarter. That's not how we roll. Sometimes you got to, and I used to try to, yeah, I used to chill, uh, chill, let chill let out. Let get tired. They're let coming, get they're coming, they're coming, coming. They're coming. Yeah. But we had that chemistry on the team. You know, yeah. I was young and, and um, I like to fight, man. I thought football was more about fighting, you know. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And um, it's great to calm him down. So oh, Terrence yeah. always had to chill out, you know, he'd calm it down, come and juice, come man. Come on, come, come on, come, on calm down, calm down, calm down. And I'll try to take some, you know, breathe a little bit and relax. But um, we had that nice balance, man, because sometimes Tony Martin came out there wanting to fight, man. And Tony yeah. would just snap, yeah, man. Yeah, snap in a minute. And I would yeah. say, I got Tony on my side yeah. today. We're fighting today. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, that was a funny dude, too. I think, I think that the biggest Very thing tough. was every player knew they role. Nobody tried to step on any other person's toes. We knew I, I knew my role, OJ. We knew our we knew our role. We knew what was gonna happen each game, you know. Okay, we know Jamal gonna carry the ball thirty something times a game. We know we only I'm only gonna get maybe five or six opportunities to catch the ball in this game. We knew that, but there was no complaining because you're winning and you knew your role. And in your role, you were being successful in that role. So you didn't want that role to change. So nobody ever went to the quarterback to call. I need more balls, or you know, well, I'm not playing whatsoever. We knew our roles and. We kept each other, like Ray said, accountable in those roles. Hey, man, this is your role. This is what we need from you today. And just do you 
and we'll be fine. It's and if we get more than that, it's extraordinary. If we got more than that, oh, it was special. We no, just, some, sometimes when I think about it, it, it's amazing how much ball there was to actually go around yeah, uh, yeah, in terms yeah. of the big plays. Yeah. I, I averaged 16 yards a catch, catch that yeah, season. That's yeah. a lot for a tight end. And yeah. these guys are making big plays at the receiver spots, at both yeah. receiver spots. Yeah. Jamal's an all world running back, you know, and picks, everybody's picking the ball off. Yeah, sacks. Yeah, Chuck Smith had five sacks in one game. I mean, the amount of things to celebrate, it was right. just like all over the field. It's a party, all game long oh, everyone's game. winning it was just great it was great yeah well guys this was fun we just recapped all of the regular season which was and still is the winningest season in falcons history you guys would end the regular season 14 and 2 so thank you for recapping with me today this has been fun and uh next we're going to talk about the postseason <laughs> <laughs>